Rebram has suffered massive and irreparable damage. Dalton Trumbo's Johnny Got His Gun, winner of the Grand Prix at the 1971 Cannes Film Festival, is an unforgettable anti-war movie. But for over two decades, the only way that most people could watch it was through excerpts incorporated in the video for One, the first ever music video by the heavy metal band Metallica. In fact, Metallica bought the rights to the movie so that they would be able to use it for their video. The song is inspired by Trumbo's 1939 novel of the same title, about an American GI who loses his limbs, face, speech, sight, and hearing in the vicious trench warfare of World War I. We follow his mental state as he realizes his condition, and his desperate attempts to communicate with military hospital staff who are ordered to keep him alive for the sake of military biomedical research. We also see flashbacks of his father, who symbolizes the nation state to which the hero is urged to pledge his life and body. Will you want me to go? For democracy, any man would give his only begotten son. The video alternates clips of the film with original footage of the band, focusing on their performance of the song, close-ups of their intense expressions, the guitarist's hands, and drummer Lars Ulrich's arms and legs illustrate their skillful musicianship. The close-ups also offer a visual counterpoint to the limbless, faceless soldier who's the subject of their song. Note also how the video starts its head-banging section right when the soldier figures out how to communicate to those around him by banging his head in Morse code. Still remember the Morse code? Metallica's video works remarkably well as a Cliff Notes version of the movie, but there's plenty about the film that a seven minute video can't possibly capture. What are they doing? Any evidence of hypostasis while I spreading? For example, the movie approximates the novel's narrative voice that slips from third person to first person as it describes the protagonist's state. They're looking at something. Trachea too, clear. This unstable perspective reflects the protagonist's literally disembodied sense of self, languishing in a state of broken humanity. No more oxygen unless an emergency develops. I don't understand that. The hero's stream of consciousness routinely veers into flashbacks, in which we see what the hero looked like before his injuries. He had a sweetheart that he left behind, though not without one night of fun provided by, of all people, the girl's father. He's going away in the morning. I know, I know, I know. Get in the bedroom. Both of you. These flashback sequences at times veer into surreal fantasy, such as this scene where a group of doughboys play cards with Jesus, knowing that they're all going to die. Time to go. If I don't make that train, I miss... I miss a date to be killed on the 27th of June at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. Not too good for my kid, huh? He's only a year, eight months, and smart as hell already. Sure wish I could see him when he was five. You'll see him when he's 50, and you'll still be 23. The film is as blunt about its anti-military agenda as one would expect of its premise. The officers who order the hero to be kept alive are as one-dimensionally villainous as one would expect. One of them even walks on crutches to symbolize his own spiritual crippledness. I, I can feel what they're doing to my arm, but I can't feel the end of my arm at all. The nearest thing to the end of my arm is the heel of my hand. But the film's most dominant feature is Timothy Bottoms' voiceover as the soldier. And it's the film's biggest liability, yet the occasional source of its greatest strengths. At times, Bottoms' aw shucks cornhusk narration can be a little too open-eyed All-American. Trumbo relies on the voice too much to literalize the hero's feelings. You can't go around cutting a man's arm off like you were pruning dead branches off a tree. Well, there's a law or something. Yes, of course I've got it. Mary. I'm trying to tell you. Merry Christmas. But when the voiceover offers a contrapunctal effect, helping to dramatize the gap between the hero's inner state and what's happening around him. The film is brutally effective. The film's most memorable scene, involving an angelic nurse's act of mercy towards a soldier, takes the film's tendency towards overdone literalism and transforms it into a dialectic opposition between the word and the body, between image and sensation.
God, I've got a date to count from. By counting Christmases, I can tell when it's spring. I can tell when it's summer. I can smell leaves burning in autumn. Johnny Got His Gun has an essential, primal quality to it, not unlike the best B-movies. This movie could be the staple of every left-wing high school teacher in America. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!